Now I am going to perform the adult cardiopulmonary resuscitation and AED skills first. I am going to begin with the assessment and activation. So I arrive on the scene and I see that the patient is unconscious or appears to be unconscious. The first thing that I'm going to do is to scan the area, check the environment for any hazard present. A hazard could be a fire, falling debris, um, chemicals, or just anything that could potentially harm us. Because if there is a hazard present and if we do get injured, we will therefore be unable to help and assist the patient. Now, scene safety would also include the use of personal protective equipment such as gloves and a pocket face mask which I will be using later in performing CPR. So this face mask will make the CPR a much safer for the rescuer as it reduces the risk of infection and it also protects the patient from contracting communicable diseases from the rescuer as well. Now after ensuring the scene is safe, I am going to um, check the level of the, the victim's um, consciousness and responsiveness by tapping the patient's shoulder and um, asking if he is okay. Sir, sir, are you okay? Sir, can you hear me? Sir. So after doing that, uh, or while I'm doing that, I am also assessing whether the patient is breathing normally, is in agonal respirations, or just not breathing at all. So now I see that my patient um, has no movement, has no response, and is not breathing. I am going to activate the emergency response system. How are we going to do that? We'll have to ask a bystander to call 911 immediately. You, sir in black shirt, call 911 immediately. We have a patient here in need of help. So after doing that, I am going to turn back to my patient and then um, check uh, the patient's uh, pulse and breathing again. So the if the patient is wearing constrictive clothing, we'll have to um, loosen it up and um, we'll have to check the patient's mouth as well um, to see if there are any anything that is in there that causes an obstruction of the airway. We also have to um, remove dentures if there are any. So I am going to check my patient's pulse and breathing. 1, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008, 1009, 1010. So I have determined that my patient has no um, pulse and is not breathing and is unconscious. I am going to proceed now to um, the to performing cardiopulmonary resuscitation or the CPR. CPR is a life-saving skill that combines chest compressions with artificial ventilation to try to maintain the brain function until further measures are done to uh, restore uh, spontaneous blood circulation and breathing um, of the patient who has gone into cardiac arrest. So how are we going to do the, or how are we going to deliver high quality chest compressions? First, locate the uh, chest area of the patient, place the heel of one hand um, on top of the center of the patient's chest. Now interlock the fingers lean over the patient's body um, have your elbows locked straight and then start doing uh, 30 chest compressions at a depth of two inches one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty eight twenty nine thirty now um, ensure that there is a complete chest recoil for each compression. After doing the chest compression, immediately um, administer two rescue breaths to the patient. I am going to uh, get my bag mask or my barrier device. I am going to cover my patient's mouth and nose with it and um, head tilt and chin lift to open the patient's airway and then deliver the rescue breaths. So each rescue, rescue breath should be given um, over a second and there should be a visible chest rise for each breath. Now, after doing that, we'll have to continue doing the chest compressions and then proceed to um, rescue breaths again until an AED arrives or until um, an emergency responder arrives to take over. Now, 
doing 30 chest compressions and rescue breathing while waiting could be very exhausting and if we do get exhausted um, our compressions becomes less deep and less effective so in order to avoid that we'll have to ask a bystander someone who could be easily taught how to do cpr or someone who already knows how to do cpr so that we could have someone to switch um, roles when we get tired so that we'll have enough time to regain our strength and maintain high quality chest compressions now i am going to proceed with the aed skills so um, until the AED arrives, we'll have to continue doing the chest compressions and the rescue breaths until the AED is ready to analyze. So assuming that I am the second responder, what I'm going to do is to turn on the AED. After turning it on, I am going to quickly scan the uh, patient's chest. If the patient's chest is hairy, we'll have to uh, quickly trim the areas in which the patches of the AED will go because um, hair will act as a barrier and then the AED might not be able to deliver the greatest shot. So AED um, is also known as the um, automated external defibrillator. It is a complex yet simple to use medical equipment that analyzes the heart's rhythm and if necessary administers an electric shock or defibrillation to help the heart re-establish an effective rhythm. So now I am going to um, place the patches. One will go over uh, the upper uh, right area of the chest just below the clavicle. And the other one will be placed um, beneath the patient's armpit just below the nipple line. Okay, so um, when we have placed the patches already, um, the AED will start analyzing the heart's rhythm and it might tell us to stop doing the compressions and the rescue breaths as it is still analyzing. So for after a while, the AED will, um, might tell us to um, stay away from the patient, to clear away from the patient and not touch the patient because it will have to uh, deliver a, an electric shock. So when that happens, what we're going to do is to everybody clear, delivery shot in three, two, one. Shot delivered. After doing that, the AED um, will tell us to resume um, with the 30 chest compressions and uh, rescue breaths for um, how many cycles. And then after that, it will reanalyze again the patient's heart rhythm. And if necessary, still, um, it will deliver a an electric shock so we'll continue doing that until the AED tells us to stop or until the patient um, has already been revived so after everything after doing all the procedure um, we'll have to uh, document the procedure done um, the time uh, the, the resuscitation started up until the time um, it ended